What's up design family and welcome back to another episode of Fit Design TV. So glad to have you back on the channel. On today's episode, we'll be looking at a commonly misunderstood and underrepresented fabric. We'll specifically be looking at velvet. In this quick episode, I'm going to run you through what velvet actually is, how it's made, we'll take a brief look at its backstory and its history, we'll look at the potential characteristics, and ultimately my goal here is to give you the specific use case scenarios that we typically see velvet in. That way, with all of this information, you should be able to evaluate whether or not Velvet is going to make a good choice for you, whether in your personal wardrobe or as part of an upcoming fashion collection. What's up design family and welcome to Fit Design TV. So glad to have you here. On this channel, we discuss all things sports, fashion, graphic design, manufacturing, and technology. We'll discuss key topics, answer pressing questions, and provide actionable steps on starting your own product line. If you're interested in any of the above topics, stick around. You're in for a good one. Getting right into it, velvet, what is it? Well, velvet is a medium to heavyweight fabric that's a luxurious, glossy winter fabric that has a silken and short nap. And when we mention the nap, we're talking about the fibers at the surface of the cloth. When you touch and feel them, velvet has this sort of characteristic carpet-like feel to it, but it's extremely soft and smooth, and it takes on different colors depending on the lighting and how it's hitting it. So this is one of the biggest characteristics and sort of like the drivers of what makes velvet, velvet. Because of velvet's higher price and its luxurious appearance, it's been a symbol of prestige and power, and often we associate velvet with royalty. In the Renaissance period, velvet often incorporated silk and other precious metal threads that were often used to create clothing for kings, queens, and other members of the church during the medieval period. King Richard II actually was known to have asked for his body to be draped in velvet upon his death, and this is also why we regard it as such a regal and royal material, even in its cheaper formations in the current day and age. Let's actually take a look at the properties of velvet and hopefully that'll allow us to understand why it's considered as such a luxurious and is widely revered as a high quality material. Well, number one, velvet has a very soft and smooth surface because of its short nap. And number two, the direction of the nap actually influences the glossiness of the fabric. Depending on how the nap is situated, and the way that the light hits, the velvet fabric will actually be represented differently. You'll know this when you see it. Also. Velvet fabric is easily frayed because of the exposed nap, so this is definitely something to bear in mind. Number four, your crushed or your matted nap often appears in these patches, which can look like stains and can give the garment a pretty disfigured or an unattractive appearance, so you do need to brush it and maintain it well over time. And lastly, velvet-based fabrics are extremely difficult to maintain because of the nap surface, so if you're buying a velvet fabric, make sure that you're maintaining it well, you're regularly brushing it, and you're storing it in the correct conditions. Next up, let's look at how velvet fabrics are actually made. Well, they're pretty much all made using the same technique. This is what is known as the pile weave technique. We've done a separate video in the past where we've gone into detail in terms of how this technique works, and I highly recommend you check this video out. When it comes to the common fibers that we see being used and involved in the fabrication process of velvet, we see silk, cotton, flax, wool, rayon, polyester, nylon, acetate, and quite often a blend of silk and rayon. All of these are great fibers and are often seen in the creation of velvet-based fabrics. It's important to understand that velvet in itself is sort of a general blanket term that's used to describe the many different fabrics that are in this velvet-based ecosystem that have this napped surface finish fabric. There are three key types of velvets that we see on the market, and the first one's going to be velveteen, second we have velour, and third we have corduroy. I'll quickly go through a comparison of each, and you guys will be able to kind of note which one you're most used to or the one that's most suitable for you. We'll start right off with velveteen. This one is a cotton version of velvet, which usually has less sheen because it's cotton-based and is slightly more stretchy, again, because it is cotton-based. Next up, we have velour, and this one is a knitted version of velvet as opposed to a pile weave, and typically is seen with a V-back knit that allows it to get this pile weave aesthetic without actually being woven. Well, how does one actually tell the difference between the three different types of velvets that we see out on the market? specifically between velvet, velveteen, and corduroy. 
we're gonna be evaluating two things, the pile length and the surface. Does it have sheen or doesn't it have sheen? The velvet, which is the most common, typically has a longer pile length than the other two. The surface usually has more sheen and that's why we see it being used on dinner jackets. It just has this luxurious, silky look. Next up, we have velveteen. Here, the piles are typically short and no more than three millimeters. And because of this and the types of materials that are used to create velveteen-based fabrics, we typically see less sheen and more matted appearance. And lastly, we have corduroy and you know these when you've seen them. They're very similar to velveteen and the surface almost has these horizontal corded surface lines. And this is a characteristic look and is primarily the driver and the appeal point of a corduroy fabric that gives it an edge over the other two types of velvets. Well guys, that is a wrap on this episode in terms of everything you wanted to know about velvet. If you guys enjoyed this type of content and want to learn about other fabrics out there, other fibers, I highly recommend you check out our channel. We'll create a separate playlist and we'll put together all of the videos we've done in the past on all different types of fibers like nylon, polyester, spandex, and a ton of others for your viewing enjoyment. Also, if you enjoy this type of content, please consider subscribing to our channel. We put out great content new on a week to week basis and haven't skipped a beat in over two years. Again, guys, thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Fit Design TV. Until next one, stay awesome.